have become inextricably intertwined, loaded in a kind of codependency that neither side thinks is particularly healthy, but which for the moment neither will move to break. I believe that what the Chinese are trying to do is to make themselves somewhat more autonomous of financial decisions made in the United States. And therefore, they want to reduce their reliance on the dollar as a reserve currency. And it seems to me they're moving very gradually, very carefully, to create a, a possibility of an alternative reserve currency. They cannot move rapidly because they, they cannot depreciate the dollar uh, without hurting themselves. Hurt themselves right. Because they have all that uh, debt. But if you, but over a 10-year period, uh, uh, the uh, basic thrust of the Chinese is to become less dependent on the American financial decisions. What is happening in China is intangible. It will test itself out over a period of years. And, and the intangible is the... The intangible is this. Uh, China is going to become uh, a very major power. There's always the uncertainty. It could also have a big domestic difficulties as everybody else has. It will become a very major power in history. Whenever a major power has developed, uh, say Germany in the late 19th century, it leads to friction with the established power because it cuts across mm -hmm. uh, established re uh, relationships. On the other hand, what is positive in the, in the situation is that both sides know that war is no solution to their problems. They also know that there's a whole series of problems that can only be dealt with cooperatively. So each leader, each group of leaders, has to overcome the tendencies towards the traditional pattern in which foreign policy has been conducted in their country. And then we can have a rather unique re relationship. But they have to find a new pattern. They have to find a, a pattern, yes, a pattern that's adequate to this period. When in my, my view is, in the 50s, we developed a concept of an Atlantic uh, mm. community partnership. Right. Right. Uh, what is needed now is some concept of a Pacific partnership community, rather than of, an, of Asia against America. They've been around a long time. They have an adequate understanding of their importance. What we need is rather than to say, let us fix the immediate currency problem, right. is to have some general discussion of where the world economy will be going and what we all have to do over a period of time. Uh, how do we handle uh, the question of proliferation in a long-term sense? and uh, and. I'm quite optimistic hmm. uh, because the Chinese, in my opinion, have concluded that they need a long period of cooperation with the United States for their own development. We have concluded that we have enough problems in the world without taking on confrontations with China. So the tone of what both sides are saying is extremely positive. So we are starting from a rather strong uh, position. We have a lot of huge problems. We have the nuclear problem in Korea. We have the nuclear problem in Iran. In, uh, uh, we, we have, of course, the whole array of problems, each of which Afghanistan uh, and so forth. But then we have the uh, financial issues. But they really are issues of the construction of a new world order. That's what this is about. And that's the sort of dialogue the Chinese are generally good at. And, as, and so a partnership between us is essential. A conflict between us 
it's going to exhaust us both in tactical exercises that cannot be conclusive. And the New World Order could satisfy both? It has to satisfy both, because otherwise it will lead to tensions that will exhaust us both. Thank you. Great to see you. Good to be here. Henry Kissinger, as President Obama is in China talking to Hu Jintao and other Chinese leaders about how to find uh, concrete steps towards building confidence and trust and a long-term view of the relationship and the roles of the two countries. Back in a moment.